Okay, so uh, we kind of had to do the first cut there because this wonderful camcorder goes, oh, 30 minutes, let's stop the video. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, we're past 30 minutes already. How yeah, we are. Out? And we haven't even touched Ursa's questions. No, God. <laughs> th 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 those, th those are for the last like segment because it's a page and a half of text. Each. Each. Um, okay, well, let's finish up with my Anons real quick. Oh, by the way, yes, she does actually speak Japanese and does it very well. I uh, just, uh, just, uh, uh, I I speak it enough. I, I I can get around in a big city, so you know, I can survive. All right, your announce. All right, my announce. Um, we just talked about OCs. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Anon says in your video. Thank you. Can you talk about why you ship Hughes and Riza at length? This is also a question that we got quite a bit of. So we're just gonna take care of it right here and now. This might take a full 30 minutes. <laughs> this might take a full 30 minutes. All right. The thing you have to keep in mind is that when we first started playing on Tumblr and playing as Hughes and Riza, neither of us actually shared an, a real ship where those two were involved. She ships Royai like it's going out of style, and I ship Hudoi. I, I, I ship, I ship Royai, I love Royai, but my pet ship is Hudoi. It's just, that's, that's what I like. I, hmm. So, when we first began, we decided that it would make a lot more sense and help us to get a, a handle of the characters better if we took it from Ishval, where they first started building their their own relationship and their own friendship. Especially because we all we both had like a grand total of ten followers. There was nobody to play with. Yeah. Let's play with each other. You know, we don't have a, a really a Roy to play with. Ishval makes the most sense. So we ended up with this uh, thread, which you can actually find on my uh, my threads page, called "War Makes Monsters of Assault." And the basic premise was, you know, Reza's up in her little. You know, she's on a, a rock outcropping somewhere a mile outside of the action, watching Roy through a scope. Hughes comes up, he, he's either done what he's, he, what he's doing or he just decided that he's gonna run cover for Riza because if he can get up there, so can somebody else. Um, and Hughes has already kind of adopted her as like a little sister kind of friend figure because she's important to Roy and Roy is his only friend. So. Um, and you know, when you got the, the special little cadet that everybody just is like, Holy crap, what the heck? Yeah. You know, cadet, what, who? Plus, okay. she's the best sniper in Ishval. Our headcanon is that Hughes is actually the one who gave her the nickname of the Hawk's Eye before he even knew who she was. And then when was, he found out, he was like, pfft, 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 huh. So, long story short, they end up saving Roy's ass, like you do, and having to move. In the process of moving and finding a new perch, Riza gets shot. Riza gets shot. I believe it was actually like a rock fragment. Um, the the ground near her gets shot because she hears the firing, ducks out of the way, but a piece of shrapnel flies up, slices open her left calf. Calf. I can talk. So they end up stranded in the bell tower of a ruined Ishvalan church for an entire night because it's getting on evening, she's wounded. There's nothing you can do. They fight their way up there. There's two guys, and there's two dead guys. And yeah, overnight, stuck, wounded Riza. We knew we were going to have to get someone to help them out or, or you know, just kind of NP. We're, we, we were on the verge of having to NPC Roy because we did not have a Roy to play with us to come and, you know, get them out of this. And they weren't gonna get out of it. In the process, though, we end up, you know, because what are you going to do stranded alone at night as the two of you? One of you is wounded. You're both tense as all hell. You talk to relieve tension. And at this point, I don't remember who said it first, and it really doesn't matter. But one of us uh, went, turned to the other over I am and said, I am really, really trying so hard not to ship these two. And the other one goes, yeah, me too. We did not start out shipping Hughes and Riza. We started out trying not to because, you know, Roy I, Hudoy, and Hughes Gracia. Yeah. Again, for me, that's that's my prime canon ship. If anything, my, my non canon ship would have been Riza and Havoc. Yeah. You know, because that makes sense. It it's, does. It's kind of cute and, and 
very much full of drinking games and snark. And mm. Mm. Uh, by the way, if there's a havoc out there, guys, I want to play that <laughs> still. But we ended up just kind of jokingly talking about it and treating it like a crack ship. But the more we talked about it, and the more we, you know, oh well, Reza would do this. Well, then Hughes would do this. We realized that it, it would, would work. work. Not only would it work, it would work amazingly well because Hughes, being the kind of man that he is, he is strong, he is a leader, but he only leads when he has to. And Riza will follow an authority figure. It doesn't matter who it is. If you put yourself in authority, Riza will follow because she is very much beta. She will take the lead if she has to. She is a beta with doesn't. alpha tendencies. Mm -hmm. She is definitely, you know, in charge. She knows that she can and she knows that she will, but she does not want to. She has no desire to lead. Whereas Hughes is an alpha with beta tendencies. He has the power, he has the capability, and he knows he does. He doesn't want the power. He leads when he has to, and usually it's only in the field. He's keeping people safe. I know what to do, do what I say, and live. That being said, watch the OVA, watch the way Roy treats him in battle. Hughes is in charge. In the field, Hughes is in charge. In camp, it's Roy. Um, but the more we discussed it and the more we talked about it, we realized that it could actually work. Now, here's the mistake that a lot of people seem to make with our ship, because of course the immediate reaction is, well, what about Gracia? We did not start out with Gracia anywhere in the picture. In fact, my immediate idea, because because I ship Hudoy, I had to figure this out for that ship, was not to have her involved at all. To have it be either, you know, it ended up being completely platonic, like a brother and sister, or Gracia was never in the story at all. And I was actually the one that insisted we keep Gracia in, because Hugh's character in Ishval is affected by Gracia. It is. The way he treats Roy on the field is affected by Gracia. The way he, the reason he fights the way he does. Hello, wind. You're welcome to Lubbock. Right? It, it's, it's Wednesday. Um, the way he acts on the field, the way he acts off the field, you know, in camp, everything, his motivation is that woman. He has to have somebody to stay level for. And as close as he is to Roy, as you know, as, as broship as it is, even in Ishval, it's not enough. He needs someone to focus on, someone to be that close. He needs her in Ishval. Now afterwards, it could end up being a completely platonic thing. In fact, that's what it ended up being. And we were actually, someone brought up the idea because we ended up doing Roy and Gracia. And someone asked us, you know, I, well, I was, I was just afraid, afraid it was a pair of the spares. Here's what you don't understand <laughs> about our ship. Yes, Husa is our primary ship, but Husa is the pair of the spares ship because it doesn't come about unless Roy ends up with Gracia. And it, it's totally believable. Think about it. They get home. Hughes introduces his best friend to his girl because yes, like you do, you would like you do. And over the course of a couple of weeks, couple of months, you know, Hughes was gonna propose to this girl. He was ready to propose in Ishval. He says as much. He's putting money by for an engagement ring. He's he's got it all planned out. But over the course of you know the next couple of weeks, couple Roy months, starts to fall for Gracia, and Gracia starts to fall for Roy, and Hughes can see this. And Hughes being the kind of man that he is, because here's the thing, as highly as everybody else thinks of him, and as wonderful a man as he is, he never sees himself as that kind of man. He does not see himself as worthy of Gracia. He never has, he never will. But Roy, who has that stupidly naive dream of making Amistris a better place, and I'll protect those under me, and they'll protect those under them, and it'll just be a snowball, and everybody will be happy and peaceful. Somebody who can come through Ishval and still think like that, and still believe in that future, that is somebody worthy of a woman like Gracia to Hughes's mind. This actually ties into a question I got, which is what are Hughes's, what were Hughes's feels uh, feelings. Uh, it was actually uh, one of Ursa's questions. Uh, is what were Hughes's, you know, feelings and thoughts about 
Roy and Gracia. It would be lying in the, in the worst way to say that he wasn't jealous. He was terribly jealous of Roy because this is the woman that he thought he was gonna spend the rest of his life with. This is what he had banked his entire future on. But he cannot take her away from a man who deserves her more. Gracia, in his mind, deserves the world, deserves the best of everything. Uh, someone who can make her happy, who will keep her safe, someone who's not broken. Hughes knows he's broken. He's known it for most of his life. Roy might be cracked because you can't come through something like Ishwell and not be, but he's not broken, not the way Hughes is. So he sees these two, you know, getting closer, becoming friendlier, falling for each other. And so he backs off. And he backs off. He calls it off. Um, at some point, I should probably actually write that because God, the feels, the feelings right there. Yeah, because you want to depress yourself for two or three days. <laughs> Didn't I already write a travel where he commits suicide because of you? I regret nothing. Uh-huh. Shut up. Uh... But he ends up calling it off. You know, it's, it's very, it's just a, they, they stay friends because he still cares for her. He cares for her very, very deeply to the point that it actually takes him another two or three months, I think, to actually start falling for Riza, even though he doesn't realize he's doing it. In the meantime, Roy and Gracia are getting together. Hughes is kind of lonely and something that, you know, if you go back and read War Makes Monsters of Assault, he promised her he'd take her out to dinner if they got through it. Teach her how to drink. Teach her how to drink, all that fun stuff. We haven't ever written that part out. That'll be fun. <laughs> so he goes, hey, Riza, let's go. That dinner that I promised you. And Riza's like, I, I, I'm sorry, what? I thought you were joking. I thought you were just trying to, you know, cheer me up and keep my focus off this well, six I, inch long gash in my leg. Well, I was trying to cheer you up, but I am nothing if not a man of my word. Come mm. on. Okay. So they went to dinner. Had fun. Friends hanging out. Why not? So the next week, hey, you want to do it again? Sure. Let's Only do the it. next week it was Reese's idea. Because she will never let a debt go unpaid. Uh, Rebecca Catalina, who I NPC'd for the, the, the reasons, the, the purpose. Actually, I, I, I believe teased her about it, calling it equivalent exchange. Something like that. Um, Somewhere buried deep in the Husa archives um, is actually an audio clip that's almost an hour long where she and I sat on Skype and recorded ourselves having that having phone conversation. The phone conversation. Go listen to it. It's hysterical. And we were in character the entire time and did not realize that it was an, actually an hour. We totally didn't until, until, we, until, until it was I was over. editing it. Yeah. And I was like, that Oops. moment when you are your muse. I, um, <laughs> hmm. Squirrel. Literally. No, there there is actually a squirrel in the tree. Show the squirrel. There's actually a squirrel over there. Squirrel. There is actually a squirrel in the tree. He's kind of cute. He's adorable. See, that's a squirrel. Okay, squirrel interlude over. <laughs> squirrel! Alright, so, squirrel interlude over. Oh, oh speaking of... Uh, do your duck impression. Uh, come on. Do your duck impression. No! <clears throat> Hi there, my name is Doug and I love squirrel. Hi there, I have just met you and I love you. Are you happy now? I'm always happy. All right, but yeah, so it, it, it started out being the ship we didn't want to ship and has become the ship that people didn't even know they were on. Husa is the ship you didn't know you shipped till you were already on it, realized you're on the ship and then realized it's a party boat. Yeah, we, we, we now have a pontoon. It, it started out being like, what, what, like one of those little pool mat floats? Yeah, where you can you know, fit two or three people. Yeah. And now, I, now, think, now I think we've got a party boat with a paddle. We don't, we, we're not quite to paddle mode yet. I want to paddle. Well, we're working on it, but we have a pontoon party boat. Yeah. I want a paddle boat where people come ship it. <laughs> I want a paddle, I, three tiers. <laughs> There's gotta be a live band. <laughs> anyway. But yeah, um, Husa has just become, uh, 
quite honestly, it's become my number one non-canon OTP. It's fun. It's hysterical. It's it's full of cute. It's full of adorable. And we now have three, four, three or four. AUs. Yeah. Modern day Amalvers. We've got uh, modern day college, modern day cop. Uh, that one's kind of died, but yeah. Well, whatever. That's it's only died because I have to figure out what Kimberly is up to <laughs> so that I can have Hughes figure it out. <laughs> See, I'm the one who has to be the bad guy and the good guy, and she just sits there and 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 shoots Fires things. Guns. <laughs> I have to be Kimberly and Hughes. Shoot me now. That's no. not an invitation. Uh, but yeah, we've got college. We've got where he's a uh, a detective and she's a cop. We've got a mall, which is a uh, fluffy and cute and adorable. And adorable. And yeah, babies. Babies. It's babies. <laughs> it, literally, it's babies. Yeah. They adopt a kid. Uh, well, he does, and, and she will <laughs> eventually. Anyway. Um, do you have any more add-ons? Uh, yeah, actually, I think I do. Keep holding this up. Yes, you do. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Um, How do you two feel, feel about, about Roy? Roy OTP! Um, I, Roy I is, aside from Edwin and the other obvious ones, like, you know, Sig and Azumi and Hohenheim and Trisha, the only canon ship. Well, Ling Fang. Well, yeah, Ling Fan is more implied than Roy Ai is. Yeah, Roy Ai. If it, the, the only way Roy Ai could be more canon is if there was a neon sign saying these two love each other. Yeah, Arakawa has said repeatedly that the only reason they are not married is because she can't marry. Them. She, she they can't because of military regulations. It's a canon ship. It is you know one of the most canon ships aside from Edwin of the, the the characters that we see i play it very specifically i play it canon only in which they don't get together until after the events of brotherhood reason being they both know that his career and his dream is more important once he's fewer or close enough to it that he's going to be and she can retire or grumman makes her retire because grumman ships it like a helicarrier <laughs> um then yeah, she'll retire, he'll propose on the spot, and those two will get married and live happily ever after and have some adorable little one quarter jingies babies. Um, there will probably be lots of them. <laughs> Knowing those two and how, and how much uh, repressed tension they have to work off, I'm thinking four, maybe five, at least within 10 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, anyway. Careful, I might name them. <laughs> I like names. Leave me alone. What's the favorite subject in school? That's my next non. Oh. This one we got a couple of. Um, I majored in history. Would any of you be surprised creative writing? No. Um, I also liked home ec a lot. You would. I... Yeah. Um, There's a baker. Why wouldn't you? She's a big yeah. No, I, I actually liked a lot of the, the crafty type stuff and yeah. interior design and, and all that fun stuff. Um, and science. I'm a science geek. I, I love science. Weather. I spent, I had a, a half hour plane trip from Houston to Dallas and then an hour and a half plane trip from Dallas to Lubbock. The hour and a half plane trip from Dallas to Lubbock, there was a thunderstorm and it was night and there were stars. And I spent the entire trip like this. <laughs> because thunderstorm and stars. And oh my gosh, you can see so many stars through a plane window. There are no lights. And I was a very, very happy little nerd. Um, why do I keep folding this up? Why do you ask me? Because you live in my head? <sighs> what is your absolute dream job? Got this a couple times as well. Um, I have said for the past almost seven years, I want to teach Japanese history at the collegiate level, specifically medieval Japanese history, because you get modern Japanese history just about anywhere you have oriental history, and I don't think that's fair. There you go. My absolute dream job, people are going to laugh at me. I want to be a mom. I want to be a housewife. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to be a stay-at-home mom. That's what I've always wanted. That's 
Can I just say that I think Reese would be like the most awesome stay at home mom ever anyway? Well, yeah. Obviously. That moment when you are, your muse. Shut up. No, um, I'd love to be a published author, but that's what you can do from home. Um, it just Tumblr blogger, is that like a professional? You know, could you make money off of being a Tumblr? People make money being off being bloggers, but I think you have to do some other stuff too. Yeah, like have ads and stuff. Anyway, and have followers. Huh, yeah. Hi, all 536 of you. I love you very much. Why are you here? <laughs> all 600 some odd. I've lost count. More than 666. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Almost 700. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite memory of a time spent together? <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> okay. Mine is going to get explained later on, but I will just leave you with this. <clears throat> Lieutenant Hawkeye! I like how you wince. It's right here. Of course I <laughs> wince. And it was there. And it was there. And I can hear it over there. And they probably can hear it. You have a fort? <laughs> <laughs> your face. I'm sorry. My face? That was your face, sweetheart. Easter. She was at my house. She and she and A.M. Um, who is Marie Armstrong the, of Briggs. Armstrong of Briggs, also Marie the Pulverizer on the Soul Leader groups. <laughs> Go follow her. Her art is beautiful. Yes. Um, oh gosh, her art is beautiful. Um, they were at my house for Easter because anime Matsuri and Easter. And yes, please. Um, <laughs> and it's actually where your story comes from, too. Yeah. But it was, I, I think it was actually Easter Sunday. That it evening. was. We were walking it was, it back was that evening from after, after service. We were walking back after church. And I say walking back because we live in the parsonage. My dad's a pastor. And um, walking back from church to house, we passed the fort like four times that day. She hadn't seen it. We're in the kitchen. And I mentioned something about, I, I think I mentioned the fact that I keep a halter under the fort or something like that. Because for my horse, you know, I, I, I keep it under the fort. You have a fort? Her eyes got this big. <laughs> and I immediately turned right around, and walked, walked out back out of the house to go see the fort. And the moment she gets in the fort, remember that bell tower scene we were telling you about? That moment when you are your muse. She's all excited and giddy and 12 years old, jumping up the ladder, gets in the fort and starts stalking like a caged tiger. <laughs> We go in and have supper. It's not that bad. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. We go up to my room. You're pacing. <laughs> can we go back to the fort? Okay, 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 can we go? I need to go to the fort. Can we go <laughs> to the fort? I'm just gonna leave now. Yeah, no. Back. Uh, ah! Back. <laughs> That was your fault. Yes. Ow. <laughs> How's your shoulder? You came in contact with me. Ow. Your bony shoulder came in contact with me. <laughs> Hi, this fault. is us IRL. Yes, you're pretty um, much. Yeah, basically no. we ended up acting out a lot of the events mm -hmm. of War Makes Monsters of Us All. Makes it even funnier when you, when you think that we were still in our Sunday best. Or I was, anyway. I was in my Sunday evening best, which means dress pants. And Oh yeah, this was March in South Texas, Houston area, which means that the trees went and everything became yellow. <laughs> Including the seat of my pants, because I sat down. And the seat of my pants, because I sat down. And sticks make very good guns, still. Yep. They, they make good guns at age 12. They make great guns now at age 25. And apparently I was jumping at every single cat. <laughs> I have like 12 cats, so. Anyway, um, yeah, that, that answers all my anons. Let's, um... I have one more anon. Okay. Which is, uh, what are, your, some, what are some of your favorite blogs that aren't roleplay blogs? Lady-Hawkeye. Taylor Tots. Facts I just made up. Get out of there, cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, alternative Pokemon art, because why not? Mm -hmm. And dog shaming. And did we mention Lady Dash Hawkeye? Did, did we mention Lady Dash Hawkeye? I don't believe we did. Uh, Lady Hawkeye. Yes. Uh, also known as Lady Greedling, Lady Avatar. Michan! We love you. We love you, Michan. Yes. 
Um, and we're gonna have a break and yes. switch locations because Ursa's next. Uh, well, I have uh, Flirty Alphonse, so. Ah, well, we, we're running out of time. Yeah, so we're actually gonna switch locations and probably get something to drink because we're in a desert and it gets dry here and she's not used to it, so. Yeah, my throat. What throat? I have a sand, sand pit. <laughs> Back to my throat, sand pit. And hair, yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs>